Today, I'm going to build the hub I need from the one I don't. Keep watching, and I'll show you how to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to basically take the axle out and all the innards and transplant it over into this more useful 32 hole hub. So I have a rear disc hub and it has no axle, no bearings, nothing. Now I have a perfectly good 28 hole hub, which is pretty much the same, but it's easier for me to find 32 hole rims than it is to find 28 hole rims. The way we start is we get ourselves a 15 millimeter cone wrench and a 17 millimeter wrench and we loosen it off. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they're stuck. <laughs> so we just try again, try to put the Put a little torque on it. And we'll just try to loosen it off. Now there is a trick where you, you would tighten a nut and then loosen it. And because you're you're trying to get movement on the nut. But in this particular case I was able to do it without. Although I did have that one little snappy setback. <laughs> okay, well you just you loosen off the lock nut and as you can see like it's been a while since this one's been off but that it came off all right and now sometimes the cone is going to be stuck nice and tight in there you just loosen it off with the cone wrench and we use the the lock nut on the drive side to hold it in place so we just unscrew it Remove it from the axle. And, and this is telling here because now we can pull the axle out and we can take a peek and see how good the innards are on this hub. And by the looks of it already, we can see that the grease is almost like brand new. And look how shiny those ball bearings are. So I think we got one of those hubs that somebody bought a bike and it just sat in in their garage and then somehow the wheel came off it and well it ended up here <laughs> really what I did is I took it off a 24 inch wheel and I, rem I, I needed the spokes for another project but that turned into a fail and there's a video for that too so we just take our magnet pull out our our bearings and as you can see, like the grease is almost brand new. It's it's almost as if it's almost as if this hub was just built. There we go. Sometimes they try to fall into the the inside of the hub body, and we count them up. There should always be nine on each side, so nine quarter-inch ball bearings on each side. Look at that grease. It's like brand new. Very interesting. And we can just pop the the grease covers, the, the seals, or whatever you want to call them. We can just pop them off with the cone wrench. Very simple. Look how sticky that grease is. Wow. It seems almost a shame. Because this hub was really, really nice. But anyways, we'll just pull out our bearings. And uh, we may as well reuse that grease. <laughs> it's it's almost like it's the exact same hub. Well, that won't come out. Huh. Very nice. So we'll just take some of that grease and just may as well reuse it. And put it right into the uh, to the transplant hub. I guess you could say the donor hub is good for just about everything. That grease is really nice. It must be a really old hub because they're just not 
greasing hubs the way they used to. A lot of newer hubs, they, they're not even ball bearing anymore. They're all uh, cartridge bearing. There's like two or three different size, two, two or three different size cartridges in there. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in some of the, the good grease that I have, and, and this is uh, cat grease, like caterpillar. Uh, I found this, uh, they were doing construction of some kind near my place, and in the, I, I guess, up the little parking lot where they were parking the, the heavy equipment, they, they took off and then they just left a whole bunch of garbage. So in that garbage, I found a, uh, I guess it's a one pound cartridge of cat grease and there was, uh, like it was discarded because it, it was used up, so the grease gun wasn't pulling any more grease out. And I just grabbed the, the rest of the cartridge, cut it open, and I snagged a lot of grease out of it. And it's really good. So here we go. We put our grease inside the, the cup, and we just place in our nine quarter inch ball bearings. And then they're... They're really nice. Well, they're OEM quality, so they're going to be good enough. Uh, but they're they're like new. It that happens a lot. Sometimes you can get rusty hubs, like really old rusty hubs, but they have the nice gray 25 uh, quarter inch ball bearings, and they're they're like almost new. Let me just do the same thing on the drive side. And essentially, we're we're loading it into the 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 free hub. So, well, really, it's the free hub body. Well, sometimes they just fall in there and they want to be stubborn. You got to pay attention. There, I'll just pull it out with the magnet and just start over. There's nothing wrong with starting over. Now, I've been doing this for a long time and I, I've never paid for hubs. Hubs are all, to me, hubs are always going to be free. They, a lot of people will buy OEM bikes and they take the OEM parts off, they sell them or whatever they do, donate them, and then they go and they buy aftermarket stuff. Eventually that stuff just ends up at my door. <laughs> and there we go, we just put that, uh, Call it a grease cap, grease cover in there. All right. And now we're gonna see if it fits. It it looks like the exact same hub, but we, we just don't know. So it seems to be fitting so far. And we'll just reinstall our this side cone. Now, sometimes this doesn't work. So that's the reason I'm actually making the video to show because sometimes it doesn't work and then it becomes a big problem and everybody likes watching problems and it's, it's because you can learn. So if, if this were something you were going to attempt, a lot of times tutorials are just going to tell you, you know, this is how you do it and that's it. But there's always going to be pitfalls and that's kind of what I'm trying to do and I, I'm trying to niche my way into that. So I'm going to do it, and if I come across a pitfall, then you're going to know about it. And what it does is it helps you increase your experience, your exposure to what's going on, and then you kind of know. You know that not everything's going to work out perfectly, even though we want it to. All right. So we're just going to tighten that this side cone back up like we did uh, when we found it on the donor hub. There, nice and tight and smooth. Okay, and what I did there is I just quickly did a measurement just to see, uh, just by eye, if there's gonna be enough thread left. And it looked like it, but it, this is looking a little, like there's a little too much thread. You're supposed to have about five and a half millimeters of thread showing and there's only one way to find out. So we grab our vernier caliper. This is essential if you're going to do this kind of stuff. 
And I have a longer arm one. The, this one has long, has longer flanges, so it, it's not sitting perfectly well, but you can see there that just by eye, I was right. There's a, a, it wasn't perfect. There's a little too much thread showing on that disc side. So it's 134 millimeters, and we want the standard of 135 millimeters. And that's the OLD, the overnut, over lock nut, <laughs> the over lock nut distance. It's somewhat hard to say, but as long as, as, long as you have an idea of what it is that you're trying to achieve, then it doesn't really matter. You just call it OLD. Now, over the years, I've made a collection of spacers and um, basically hub related stuff. And right now, I'm looking for a one millimeter spacer. Sometimes I have them, sometimes I don't, which is why I developed this small system here. Uh, it's more of a hoard <laughs> collection. And then uh, I'll always have my spacers when I need them. And here we go. It's a one millimeter spacer. We also have to make sure that it's not too wide or wider than the cone because if the cone is a little too deep inside of the hub, then the spacer can get in the way of the cone wrench. The cone wrenches are, are thin, but sometimes it doesn't work out and that's another pitfall. And we're going to see if that happens here. So again, I measured out 134. Let's just put our spacer on there. Just to double check before we do any work. There we go, perfect. 135 mil. All right. So the tedious part, just unscrew the lock nut. Put the grease on there. Always have to make sure you grease the stuff just in case it becomes neglected. And then you end up with it 10 years down the road or five years down the road and it's all seized on. And we'll just double check. There we go. We have just enough room for our cone wrench, so that'll be the perfect width. If it wasn't, then we'd have to get a we'd have to get a spacer. Right here, all I'm doing is I'm just looking for beveled edges. And both sides have the beveled edge, so it's okay. As I was saying, we, we'd have to look for a spacer that's a little more, little more narrow. Come on, you fuck. <laughs> I guess I wasn't impressed with something. Sometimes the uh, nuts, they, they just don't thread on right. It, it takes a bit to engage the threads. And I guess, uh, I guess that one got. <laughs> Okay, it seems to be spinning well. Before we tighten everything up, we, we just want to make sure that everything's compatible. So yeah, it's spinning fine. We can see that there's going to be enough room to install the cassette lock ring. And now we know for sure that the cone wrench fits properly. We're just going to tighten it on. And then we'll see if there's any play. Nice and smooth, no play. Everything spins. Huh. All right. It looks good, feels good. That must mean it is good. <laughs> okay, basically we've seen how to remove the innards of one hub and reuse them into another hub. And I know for sure I'll be finding a 32 hole rim a lot faster than I'll be finding a 28 hole. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.